Hello and welcome back to Songs of Six. Today we're going to be going over a new challenge I had for myself. Something that I like the most about Songs of Six is the smaller population size. Especially how much you can achieve with just a small population. As most city builders, you're only limited to about 70 to maybe 500 people, depending on the city builder. Most of them don't deal in thousands of population like songs of six does and when you get to that point in this game it gets very cumbersome not in a bad way but it is very challenging for a new player or even old players to utilize all of the functions and also take advantage of all those large populations mostly that's for if you want to conquer the world but if you want to play this game to its max and its best i personally like to play it on a small scale so today I'm going to be going over how I built a small scale city or town with 150 people and exactly how much I was able to achieve with those 150 people, specifically humans. Uh, if I was to be doing this as any other race, I do not believe I would be achieving nearly as much as I have as the humans. As you can see, many of them are clean. Many of them are happy. There is a great surplus of food. We've got at least 10 days stored of food. And that's not including all the food that we're producing, plus all of our grain and everything else. And of course, we could get more people. But we are limiting ourselves to only 150 so that we can see exactly what we could achieve. To show you guys what I've got, I'm going to start all the way on this side, which I call the industrial zone. And of course, we got a nice little toot to open her up. And of course, another scooter to drive by in the background. As is tradition to a fiend video, you always got to open her up with a toot and a scooter. Toot and scoot, as they call it. So here we are. We have a lot of different buildings, and many of these buildings are worked only by one individual worker, or up to several workers. Many mines have more workers, of course, because we need more of that raw resource. And the other buildings, like this potter, smelter, etc., have only single workers. This sometimes puts people off. A lot of people really want to have 20 smelters, 100 ore miners. They want to have a thousand guys doing every job. But I don't think they take into account that when you do that, you are constraining your services in that area immensely, immensely. And also, I, I did kind of think they were doing that, and I, I wanted to stop them from doing that. They're, they're crossing over here. You're not supposed to go over there. You're supposed to stay over here. So... What I mean by that, though, is that these guys will start to constrain an area. So if, for example, we had 100 workers at this war mine, we're going to need 100 spots for people to live. 100 spaces for people to actually get well access. 100 spaces for the hearth, etc., etc. So the larger a building, the larger a area, 
the more access you need, obviously. That can be difficult when you don't have enough space and the access can only be so plentiful. So, for example, this area, we are minimizing the amount of workers possible in this area by having very few. And that's all you really need to get a city going. You don't need uh, a dozen or more ore miners. You could have four or five like I normally do or have a few surplus guys working there while you have some spare extra labor uh, and then when you start to lower down like I have into the the low, like 500 point here I'll take a few guys away like so and we'll just bring them over here and we'll just put them in a fishery so these two guys will go into a job that will turn some food around for our boys so that they're, ha they're happier and then they'll keep going back and forth so we have the same going for the clay pit here so we have three clay diggers these guys constantly are filling up this building this warehouse and then this potter here will grab that clay and makes it pottery mind you all of my people in the city have access to each of their furniture minus jewelry of course because that is something you're gonna need to be at least into the 500s if you don't have access to gems close by uh, you're gonna have a harder time doing that but for the most part we have all of our furniture needs covered at least at 55 percent we have one per person on the clothing and we have pretty good food access and food days so all of our guys are relatively happy and we have very very good environmental uh situation based on the fact that a lot of our buildings are preferential our roads as well we are trying to minimize as much noise as we can possibly do and we obviously have a 100 percent lighting right right there and very good space the space is mostly to do with how much space they have between each other i believe that that means like this kind of stuff like that uh you can see i've still built these very tight knit roads it's just so that the, the uh, organic flow kind of works with it as we get along here though we've got our charcoaler we've got a warehouse for the charcoaler and all his access and then the same goes for the smelter so he has a shared access point so what happens is wood is taken here turn into coal coal is placed here and then this guy basically brings it to the smelter smelter creates his iron or metal and then we store it up here so you can see we've got a decent amount of metal stored up the smithy then comes over and grabs some of that metal and some coal some coal and then makes tools which we usually have a surplus of currently we do not uh, and you can see we have a need for 308 148 for all of our different uh, farms and agriculture needs, 32 for all of these different needs, and then we have 128 being allocated to the laboratories. So, not too bad, not too bad, and he helps boost our technology immensely, allowing for us to have things that we normally wouldn't have otherwise. And then we also have our mason and his tiny little warehouse next door to him. So this guy works in conjunction with the stone miners, so we could actually probably pull three of those guys off and put them over here as well because we want to get more fish more fish and the stone mine all he does is basically produce stone straight to this guy um at the stone cutter or the mason i always want to call him the stone cutter the mason and we're going to be storing all of this cut stone up so that when we get the technology necessary to get statues and other good stuff we will use that or we could even just start building houses out of the grand stone anyways and get that boost early on so that people are happier living in these nice houses like this right here and i've just been going willy-nilly placing houses as it goes down here there's nothing special about this area i just placed houses in what i felt was a very nice looking view um not looking for perfect aesthetics or, or symmetry or anything like that just kind of like how it would have been placed randomly by people we have our herb farm so the herbs are really important they are helping us make money we also have our opiates which we're pulling from here we forage opiates uh, opiates i was going to say herbiates uh we forage the opiates and we harvest our herbs and we sell them and then we also have some fruits for just a little bit of an extra food boost but really nothing as it keeps going down, we've got our orc pasture and our antelope pasture. These two guys surprisingly keep us stocked with leather and livestock. Although we need more of them to get more meat because we are constantly eating it all. And it doesn't even get to be stored away before it's eaten. As we go a little bit further, we've got our lab. This is the first lab I built in the city. We have eight workers here. 
and a little warehouse next door for all of the livestock and fish in this area. And then their housing. This is as dense as I like to go for housing. At least three, so 30 people in this area. As you can see, the service is pretty good. And I, I check to the, make sure the numbers are good too. So it says there's available 28 slots. Uh, the max you really want to put is like double that in this area. So like 56 people in this area would be kind of pushing it. Uh, as you can see, I've got 10 right in here. We've got 10 here, so that's 20. Those 20 people are going to be living in this area, constantly crossing these two, the market and the food stall, as well as these shrines and the lavatory. But for the most part, they do keep up with the, the need or the the uh, services. Same with this well. I have to upgrade this well. Most of the other wells in the town, you can see, are small. So as they get past more and more, they start to get used more and more. So like this one, being a access point crossing a lot of people, we're going to need to upgrade that and get them a bigger well. Stuff like that is not a real big concern of mine, though. It's for the most part, they have access to what they need, and that's all that matters. As we get over here, this is something that I really, really wanted to show people and kind of proves a point that I've made in the past to a lot of people and a lot of people disagree with me. You can make very, very small farms, like a cotton farm, and a single weaver, and you can produce enough fabric or produce any resource in excess to actually give your guys stuff. So we even have them having fabric as a furniture item and some to store extra so if you just simply build the farm have one guy do it you can have your guys harvest the uh, forageables from the real world here build a small farm and start to slowly expand it by clicking on this and using the house symbol here you can expand it outwards each year adding a little bit more space until you have enough each year to have a surplus when that is all said and done you'll be really happy that you don't have to spend every single year thousands and thousands of your hard-earned denarii on fabric or furniture or other things like that because you'll have things like a woodcutter which is another item or building that is often neglected and not used because in old metas woodcutters are useless in the new meta jake has made the woodcutter a very useful build so we have the woodcutter here producing enough wood where the last time i checked it was at 1.1 and that was at winter time now we're at 1.3, so they are producing enough wood to actually see it a surplus. These guys in the carpenter will never run out. The same with these tailors. They shouldn't run out of the leather, and if they do, we even have an import depot with the excess money that we're making from selling opiates and livestock. We keep up with our leather and potentially grain if we ever ran out, but this single grain farm is enough with two guys to keep us in the green for our grain and we only have three bakers obviously we have no bread available but if i look here for the most part oh actually i lied some of them have bread a lot of them don't right now that's one of the, the contention points for me right now is to actually expand that but as you can see we have fish and it's not something that we're worried about food is not a problem we could purchase food we could sell things we could do all kinds of different things to get our food up there but we do have bread as an option and we have tons and tons of grain stored away in case that is a problem. If you think about it, each one of these is a loaf of bread. So we have 1,000 loaves of bread just waiting to be made. And as we go along, we've got our basic carpenter, our little furniture carpenter. Uh, this guy is producing clothing, tailor, and he's producing leather armor. And each one of them has a tiny little warehouse. One crate each for each of their items. These are single creations, are... Uh, single products so basically one leather goes to one uh leather armor same goes leather armor or leather shirt and then uh wood to furniture we have our military warehouse we've got our carpenter making warhammers so we've got 72 warhammers and 144 leather armor this is only lower because i produced or built the building much later after probably like a year after i built this so he's a little bit behind and you can see he's got a warehouse right next door with his stone, wood, and warhammers. If I had any furniture stored away, I would actually upgrade that. We have a graveyard across the street from our throne room. And then we also have a training ground right in front of it as well. All of our people in the city have died from aging. Nobody dies from accidents. 
Nobody dies from murder. There's no problems. It's a beautiful city all around. And you can see we've got housing all over here for these guys at the training ground. And a little stage to top off the area with a stockade and a final laboratory for the excess knowledge that we needed. So, with 150 people, we managed to get all of these different buildings. If I was to count them, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten services. Are, uh, not services, but industries ready to go, and I could probably even check faster by going here. So we have the four of these guys. Bakery is already there. And then we've got these six. So, yep, at least ten different industries going. In our city, with 150 people, one person working at each, then we have at least 29 fishers, and tons and tons of other workers doing odd service jobs like laboratories, working at food stalls, working as janitors, etc. And we have our, our pasture workers, of course, too. So there's 12 of these guys working here. At the end of the day, we, we've spread our guys out pretty well. You can see we, we are down to the man here. But obviously you can at any point get more. So that will be the next goal for me is to see how far I can go with another population. Uh, be sure to leave me a comment on what you'd like to see for the next population goal. Uh, and I might do these series for other species, depending on how this one goes. I'm going to be trying to do new and more unique videos each week as I progress in views and I progress in subs. I really want to give you guys, the viewers, something more unique, something memorable from the feed, you know? So I hope I achieve that. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you, you enjoyed this episode. And be sure to go try this out. I, I always recommend people... Try out building an entire city with just your people. Don't import anything. Don't ask your neighbors for anything. Don't get slaves. Don't do any of that. Try to just build a city with just your people and see if you can do it. One of my favorite things, one of the best challenges in Songs of Six, uh, you don't need to put the hard difficulty all the way up there. A lot of people like doing that. More degradation, more spoilage, really just means that you're, you're handicapping yourself for no reason. The game's plenty of hard uh, if you play it true to your species and you do the monoracial cities. Uh, multiracial can be extremely easy. If I had at least four Kryptonians or five Kryptonians working my farms and all my humans just using knowledge work and, and doing that stuff, we would be far, far better off. And the same if we had Dodarians with us too. So there's definitely a real meta. Of course, you could do these three, the god races, the, the master races. Uh, and you could destroy the game, or you could play it the fun way and just kind of dig your way out of a hole that you yourself created. So, anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.